I'm going to show how to make a simple shiplap joint frame. Say, for example, a glass panel at a cabinet piece of furniture. So, uh, using the multi use cutter in its basic position with the zero setting on the shaper, we're going to make our end cuts and then uh, make our cuts long ways with the feeder. So, We'll make the end cuts first and set the fence. And 11.9 high for the end cut. Close the fence in. I use a little Agner device to do the end cut with. This could be done many ways, but uh, this is pretty convenient for this type of work. We could use the overhead guard to protect a little bit, but I'm going to leave that up just for the filming here so you can see better what's happening. We've got nice clean end cuts and actually with this cut we could we could do the long cut first if we wanted to it doesn't make any difference because we're backed up with a good chip breaker so now I'll reset my height a little bit By not moving the fence, you get a nice, flush, even joint for your rabbit. And of course, this would need to be reinforced with a domino or dowel or something of that nature. And I could actually show you, we could do a tenon cut. We're over at the sliding table. If you actually wanted to mortise some tenon in this corner, the end cut it could be done as a tenon using the multi-use also. Okay, for the tenoning we've moved over to the T26 shaper and we'll be using the uh, small bolt-on sliding table. So we have been using the cutters for grooving stacked like this. And now for tenoning we'll be flipping the cutters over. And using spacers between the cutters to get our desired tenon thickness. We'll be putting some spacers in there. And with these spacers you can get around 46 millimeters deep for the tenoning. If, if you use a smaller spacer you can get over two inches deep for the tenon. So, but today we're going to be using the uh, standard spacers that come with the machine. So we start by putting on the bottom cutter. Put our spacers in.
So with this shaper, we'll be using the auto set feature uh, for both the height and the fences. So we'll cut the long tenon first. Because we're going so deep, uh, it's not possible to use the Eigner bars, but it's it's fine. We're, we're safe anyways. But I'm going going to uh, employ the overhead guard just as a little added precaution here. That's a real clean tenon, real accurate thickness because of the spacers. This one's about 47 millimeters deep. Okay, earlier uh, in doing this frame with a simple shiplap joint, we talked about how we could do a true tenon using the multi-use cutter. Uh, so what we're going to do, I've spaced the cutters far apart. doesn't really matter how much, just enough to give clearance. And we're going to use the, uh, the fence in two positions here to achieve this. And one cut will be from the top and one cut from the bottom with the workpiece remaining the same. And that way will give us a consistent tenon. I keep the machine running doing this, but I am going to shut down between the two operations just just for safety <laughs> 